Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we'll be looking at how we can host a Laravel project on a managed cloud hosting as quickly as possible. So let's get this started. Alright, so the first doubt that people might have is why do we need to opt for managed cloud hosting when we can actually go and use the actual cloud hosting providers which are providing those services. So the main reason behind opting for you know providers which give out managed cloud hosting is because they simplify the process and they take care of handling all the servers and everything behind the scenes. So you don't need to worry about that and you can just concentrate on development and deployment, that's all. And in this video, we'll be using one of such providers called as DevRims. So let's open the browser and let's quickly search for DevRims. Open the first link. So there are two main reasons why I've chosen DevRims for this particular video. One of the reasons being its ease of use. Their dashboard is really sleek and modern looking and the way that they've structured it is really easy to use and you can get started with the project really quickly. And the second reason is that they offer a free trial for I think six days wherein you can create an account and with that free trial you get one server in which you can start your own testing. So for that six whole days you can completely use that server to test your project and then if you're satisfied with those services then you have to give your credit card information and you can upgrade your account. So in that span of six days you don't need to give any of your banking information and I think that's a huge plus point for this particular website. So let's quickly see how we can get started with our own account and let's see how we can deploy our own Laravel project as well. So I'll link this particular website in the description down below. You can go from there and get started for your own account as well. So I have already tested this particular platform and I already have an account. So let me log into mine. But if you're just getting started, click on the start trial and you can create a new account. All right, so as soon as we log in, this is the interface that you're gonna see. So if you have logged in for the first time, you might have a banner saying you're under the trial period. So ignore that and you can just start testing with your own applications. So on the left hand side, you have all your servers, applications and account information. So you can go through these and see what they are and what they offer. For now, let's go to the servers and create a new server. As you can see, I already have a testing server which I used previously to test this particular platform. So let's quickly create a new server and let's see how we can deploy our code onto this particular server as well. So let's click on add new server. So I'll be creating a PHP Laravel website. So I'll be opting for that. And one major benefit for this is that they are actually showing us the Laravel 8.3 version. Most of the other providers don't give out Laravel with the latest version. They might be using six or seven, something like that. But they are giving for eight, which is, though it's not the latest, it is still a higher version, right? So once you're done with that, you have to select the stack with which you're gonna go for. My preference would be to go with Lampstack because they offer Nginx and with Lampstack you're gonna use Apache. Nginx is a bit faster compared to Apache, so that's what I'm gonna use. Or if you want, you can go with Lightspeed as well, which is much more memory optimized, but for our case, I think Nginx is good enough. So let's click on that and then in the bottom you have to select which service provider that you wanna go for. So either you can choose with Amazon Web Services or with DigitalOcean. So the main benefit of choosing AWS is that they offer a lot of locations throughout the world. So let's go with AWS for this particular video. So let me select India for this. And if you scroll down, these are all the server options that you can opt for. So these are the general purpose servers or if you want, you can go with CPU optimized servers or also memory optimized servers. But for now, let's only go with the general purpose server and let's select the basic one. Okay, so we have 2GB of RAM and 2.5 gigahertz of CPU. So let's go down and let's select the volume. So for now, I'm gonna leave it at default, which is 15 GB and let's click on next. So once you're done with that, you have to enter the server name. So let's give some name for this and let's also give a name for our application. All right, so now that is done, let's click on deploy. All right, so now the server is being created and it's gonna approximately take around 10 minutes to get it up and running. So instead of waiting, let's use the power of video editing and let's reduce the time to one second. All right, so here we are and it seems like our server is now up and running. So let's open that. So these are all the details which are related to that particular server. So these are your server credentials. So you can use these. And if you go to the applications tab, this is the URL for your server. In the monitoring tab, you have all the details regarding your CPU, memory, disk space and everything. So you can go to the intricate details and see what's happening in the server as well. Apart from that, you have your services section, which lists out all the applications which are currently installed. So since we have opted for LAMP stack, we have Nginx, PHP, and MySQL installed. And for system services, we have all the default services enabled. And since SSH is also running, we can use this to connect to our server. So if you go to the data sources, you can actually create your own databases from this particular section. So let's come back to this once you have deployed our code onto the server. 
under the security tab you have all the ports which are actually opened to the particular server so you can go and individually see the details regarding that particular port then we have server scaling wherein you can opt for the higher plan and you can either upscale or downscale your servers based on your requirements similarly you can also upscale or downscale your disk size as well apart from that you also have some basic settings like deleting a server as well so let's now go back to the access details and let's connect to this particular server so here they mention that to access a server via SSH and SFTP, we have to use port number 2222 for SSH and 22 for SFTP. So let's see how we can do that. Even if you're using either a Linux system or a Windows system, the process is pretty much same. The first thing is that you have to open a new terminal instance. So let's quickly do that. Now inside your terminal, the commands that you have to use to connect to this are SSH space username. So this username is going to be the username of your user account. So either you can use this or in the menu below, you can create a new SSH user and give permissions to that particular user. For now, let's actually use the root user because we'll be not making that much of change. So let's copy the username, go back to the terminal, paste that, then give at the rate. And here you have to type in the IP address of the particular server. And the IP address is present here. So click on this and that's going to copy the IP address. Let's go back and let's paste it here. Now, since they have specified that if you want to connect to the SSH, you have to use the port number 2222 and for SFTP, it's 22. So since you have to differentiate whether you want to SSH or SFTP into your server, you have to specify the port number as well. So here I'll give in hyphen P, then give a space and let's type in 2222. Then click on enter. It's going to ask whether you want to connect to this particular server or not. Let's type in yes. And then it's going to ask the password. Go back to the server details and copy this particular password and then paste it here, click on enter. And now you're connected to your particular server. As you can see, you're connected to this particular user and this is the actual server. So let's actually see what files that we have. Let's type in ls. We have a folder called as applications. So let's cd into applications. Let's list it out again. Seems like we have Laravel tutorial CMS. So let's cd into that as well. And in here seems like we have three folders called as logs, private HTML and public HTML. So what we have to do is that we have to deploy our code into the folder called as public underscore HTML. And the way that we can do that is by using Git. So let's actually go to GitHub and in GitHub there is a project called as Laravel blog. So this is the project that we'll be deploying onto our server. So this project is part of the Laravel mini series that we have going on right now in our channel. So if you're not following that playlist, I'll link that playlist in the description down below. You can go there and check that out. And I'll also link the repository in the description down below. You can go there and clone this particular repository and use it to test the server on your own as well. So for now, let's copy the URL. So let's click on code and let's copy the HTTP URL. So let's go back and in here, let's cd into public. And if you list it out, you'll see there are some dummy files present inside of this particular folder. So let's clone a project into this particular folder. So let's type in git clone, then give the URL, then give a space and type in dot. Now let's click on enter. Okay, so it seems like the clone command failed because the directory is not empty. So there are two possible solutions to this. First is to either delete all the files inside of this particular folder that is public underscore HTML, then clone our own repository. Or the second one is to directly clone the repository into a separate folder, then copy those files and place that inside of the public.html. So let's see whether the first method works. If not, let's go with the second method. So let's cd out of this particular folder and let's remove everything recursively inside this particular folder. And the command to do that is rm give a space hyphen r then the folder name give a slash and star that's going to recursively delete all the files inside of the folder now if i go to public underscore html and if i list it out you'll see that the folder is empty so let's clear the screen and let's try to git clone the particular repository once again okay so it seems like the folder is still not empty and that is because we still have hidden files inside of this particular folder so let's go back one folder once again. Now let's try to remove the folder files once again. Let's type in rm hyphen r, then give the folder name, give a slash, and then give dot and a star. That's gonna recursively remove all the hidden files as well. Let's enter that and it's not gonna remove the dot and dot dot notations. So let's now cd into public once again. And if you now type in ls hyphen a, we can see that there are no files. Now let's try to use the git clone again. All right, so now the project has been cloned. So now if I type in ls, you'll see that we have all our latest files. So let's clear that. All right, so now let's type in composer update. That's gonna update all of our dependencies. 
Once that is done, let's type in composer install. Alright, so now that our dependencies have been installed, let's actually connect to the database as well. So let's go back to DevRims and let's go to data sources and let's create a new database. So I'm going to give it as Laravel tutorial. Let's keep the same thing as the password as well. And as for the password, let's generate a secured password. It doesn't have any special characters. So let's give it a hyphen. And it seems like that password has been accepted. So let's click on save. And that's going to start creating the database in the background. All right, so now that the database has been created, let's expand this. And now we have to use these details inside of our .env file. So for that, let's go back to our terminal. And in here, let's clear out the screen. Let's list out all of our files. And as you can see, we have a .env.example file. So let's copy that and create a .env file as well. Now let's nano into that env file. In here, let's go to the database connections and let's change the database name. So it's going to be Laravel tutorial and the username is going to be the same as well. As for the password, this is the password that we had used. So let's copy that. Let's go back and let's right click here and the password will be pasted. Once that has been done, let's click on Ctrl O, then Ctrl X to exit out of the nano editor. Okay, so now that the database has been connected, you can directly use your migrations or seeders to populate your database. So let me quickly do a fresh migration. Okay, so now our database has been migrated. Let's also use the seeders to generate some dummy content. Alright, so now our database has been populated with some dummy data. So let's now see if our website is live and whether we can see our page as well. So let's go back to the browser. And now if you go to applications, you'll see that the URL for this particular server is present. Let's open that. And as you can see, we have some exception here saying that you cannot access the storage folder. So the reason that is happening is because the storage folder inside of our application doesn't have the read and write permissions. So for that, you have to type in chmod hyphen r, then give a space, then type in triple seven, then type in the folder name, which is storage. And that's going to give it all the permissions so that it can work properly. Now, if I go back to the browser, we're going to have another issue and that is the app key is missing. So we have to generate a new application key as well. So let's type in php artisan key generate and that's going to create the key for our application. Now, if you go back to the browser and refresh, you'll see that the blog is now live. So let's click on show blogs and it's going to ask for the login information. Since we don't have our login information, since we are a fresh user, we need to go to the register page. And for that, we have to type in register. And the reason why we are doing it through the URL is because I've hidden the register option so that no new users can come and register. But since we still need to have that backward functionality, I've kept it so that only people who know that particular thing can access it. Right. So now let's type in some information here. Okay, so now that we have registered, let's click on show blogs once again, and that's going to showcase all of our blog content. So let's see if we are able to create the blog posts or not. Okay, seems like all of our functionality is working. All right, so that is how you create and deploy your Laravel application to DevRim's managed cloud hosting. So if you want, you can go through this particular process and create and host your own project. And you can also browse through the left hand menu and see all the options that they currently are providing and based on the requirements you can see whether that functionality is present or not and as you've seen the process of creating and deploying our application onto this particular managed web hosting is really simple so if you want to use devrims for your own particular project as well i'll provide the link in the description down below you can go from there and get started with deploying your own project as well so that's it for this video guys i hope you have liked what you've seen till now if you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.